Good morning, pleasant parishioners. I pray that all is well. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, we are thankful that you are coming to share with us on our live worship service. Uh, I hope your Thanksgiving uh, was delicious and safe. Uh, and we're glad that you're here with us today. Again, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, we just want to call your attention to the word of God. Uh, amen. We want to call your attention to uh, the word of God. And we are dealing with Daniel. Daniel, the first chapter. Daniel, the first chapter. And as you're turning into your Bibles, uh, there, are a key, there are a few key pieces to worship. Um, and in worship, uh, the key pieces, the components of worship uh, is prayer, uh, reading of scripture, uh, and song. And we want to do that before uh, we press on into the word. Uh, God, we thank you for this time uh, that we have to share with your pleasant parishioners. God, we pray that something is said that would encourage someone. And Lord God, uh, something is said to, to cause one to live a life that is pleasing in thy sight. Lord God, we thank you for our virtual virtual uh, listeners. And we, we thank you for all that you have done uh, in our lives. God, we ask now that you bless us and allow us to... Uh, this word to permeate our hearts in the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Amen. 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 Also, brothers and sisters, <clears throat> I, I'm a little bit congested. However, another component of worship is uh, song. So if you can endure with me through just a verse uh, of this hymn, uh, I would be uh, grateful. <clears throat> Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born in his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight, angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. God bless you. Again, thank you for enduring with me. Uh, Pastor Letcher's voice is a little bit congested. Uh, that little daughter of mine, every uh, week she's coming home with the sniffles and she's giving it to us. But we're thankful today. It's not COVID, and, but we're thankful today. Thank you again for coming and sharing with me. Let's jump into the word of God. Uh, we won't be before you long. 
Uh, and we thank you for your patience uh, as we strive to return to in-person worship. Uh, but we're in Daniel, Daniel, the first chapter, and we're going to read a few select verses and we will jump into the word. Um, we'll read uh, verses 1, 8, and then we will go down to 13 through 15. Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1, verse 1, and then verse 8, and then we will skip down to 13 through 15. I'm reading from the New Translation, New Living Translation, and it reads thusly. During the third year of King Joachim's reign in Judah, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to Jerusalem and besieged it. We'll move down to verse 8. But Daniel was determined not to defile himself by eating the food and wine given to them by the king. He asked the chief of staff to, for permission not to eat these unacceptable foods. Uh, let's move down to verses 13 through 15. Um, and it says, at the end of 10 days, See how we look compared to our uh, to the other younger men who are eating the king's food. Then make your decision in light of what you see. The attendant agreed to Daniel's suggestion and tested them for 10 days. At the end of 10 days, Daniel and his three friends looked healthier and better nourished than the young men who had been eating the food assigned by the king. And brothers and sisters, just for a few moments, I just want to uh, use as a subject, consecrated in the midst of chaos. Consecrated in the midst of chaos. Brothers and sisters, God calls for us uh, to be consecrated, even though we live in a time of confusion, anxiety, and chaos. And this gives us a blueprint on how we can be consecrated uh, in the midst of chaos. First of all, we just want to mention about what consecration is. Consecration is an act that every believer at some point on our spiritual journey should experience. For it is the devoting or the setting apart of anything to worship or to render service unto God. Whether we realize it or not, our lives are designed to give God worship. Our lives are designed to give God worship. And our lives are designed to give service unto God. Whether we realize it or not, brothers and sisters, we are called to worship and to serve God. The Apostle Paul reminds us in Romans, the 12th chapter, in the first verse where he says, I beseech you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, that which is your reasonable, reasonable service. God calls us to give our reasonable service unto God. In the ancient context, before the priest would offer sacrificial offerings unto God, he would first consecrate it in order that it be adequate for God's use. Brothers and sisters, uh, when we look at uh, when we consecrate ourselves, it cleans us up. Uh, it prepares us for proper serviceability unto God. Every product, what I've discovered in life, granddaddy used to always say, anything man-made will break. And brothers and sisters, every product at some point needs servicing. Therefore, I suggest to you that while we are beseeched by Paul uh, to offer our bodies to, to service to a holy God. I, with equal intensity, urge that before you ever seek to serve a holy God, 
uh, I with equal intensity uh, urge you uh, that you ought to be serviced. You ought to be serviced and consecrating ourselves is a way of servicing ourselves before God. One of the chief reasons that the priests would consecrate themselves is that if you serve food with unclean hands, you can contaminate the entire body. Because if you don't consecrate yourself, you will seek to serve a holy God with dirty hands. Brothers and sisters, we never want to seek to serve a holy God with dirty hands because, brothers and sisters, that means that uh, if you seek to serve a holy God with dirty hands, you'll come uh, into the service of God with the wrong intentions. Your heart won't be right. Uh, you have different reasons for why you want to serve God. Brothers and sisters, we want to come before the presence of God with a holy hands and a consecrated heart and a mind that is centered on Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, so this text is talking about fasting. Fasting is a spiritual journey. Again, that <clears throat> every believer at some point in life ought to embark upon. Fasting offers the believer the opportunity to meet the standard of holiness that the Apostle Paul is talking about so that our service can be rendered acceptable unto God. Fasting detoxifies us of devious desires. Fasting alleviates us of ill intentions. Fasting cleanses us spiritually and not just physically. Dorsey Thomas once wrote, a song called Search Me, Lord. You all remember that song, don't you? We used to sing it back in the day. Uh, Search me, Lord. And if you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out and straighten me because I want to be right, I want to be saved, and I want to be whole. My brothers and sisters, we all know that it is a challenge striving to live whole in an unholy world. It's a challenge, brothers and sisters, as we strive to live uh, healthy in a sick world. You know we're living in a sick world. We live in a politically correct but morally corrupt culture. We live in a society where sin is socially acceptable yet divinely deplorable. Uh, much like the narrative of our text, if we look at our text, uh, the world that they lived in was in uh, a sense of chaos. It, it was uh, in a sense of calamity. As we enter the world of the text, we discover that Judah has been overthrown by the Babylonian kingdom. King Joachim uh, was dethroned by King Nebuchadnezzar, which means that all of the customs of Israel were replaced by the cultures of Babylon. The laws were dissimilar from the sacred traditions of Judah. Uh, these young men were catapulted into a cosmos of chaos. So then, brothers and sisters, the question arises for us, what do you do when chaos seems to consume the culture in which you live in? What do you do when chaos seems to consume the environment that which you live in? How do you stay consecrated in a world uh, that is full of chaos? If you look at the text, the text gives us a good little blueprint. The first thing that strikes me in the text is that if you are to stay consecrated in the midst of chaos, you need to surround yourself with some loyal people. You need to surround yourself with some loyal people. Loyal people help us to stay consecrated unto God. The text says, watch the text. The text says, among them were Daniel and Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah from the tribe of Judah. You all follow me and I'm going to get to what I'm talking about. My brothers and sisters, the book of Daniel is a set of memoirs recorded that reflects upon the events of Daniel's life. 
the sixth chapter of Daniel uh, is sharing about Daniel's experience. Uh, it reflects on Daniel's in the lion's den. The fifth chapter was the king's feast and the strange handwriting that appeared upon the wall. Come on, Bible scholars, walk with me. The third chapter was talking about the story of the fiery furnace. These friends were important enough and influential enough that Daniel takes the time to write them into scripture. He takes the time to write them into this book. And if you, he took time, brothers and sisters, if you look at the text, you will discover that these men were not only loyal to Daniel, but they were loyal to the Lord. I want to say that again, brothers and sisters. These men were not only loyal to Daniel. It's important to have friends that are loyal to you. But more importantly, it's important to have friends that are loyal to God. Brothers and sisters, you need friends that are not only loyal to you, but they are loyal to God. That when you are about to go through one of life's trials, you need prayer partners who will pray for you to help you get through. You need some loyal friends. You need some covenant comrades to keep you committed to the Lord when you're thinking about cutting out and giving up. You need some companions that will keep you accountable when you get off course. Brothers and sisters, you need somebody that's not only loyal to you, but they're loyal to God. Because when you have friends that are loyal to God, they'll help you stay on track when you get off course. Brothers and sisters, you need an entourage, an encouragement entourage that will lift you up when you get discourage. Brothers and sisters, having the right friends around you helps you to stay centered. It gives you accountability. It gives you protection. It gives you encouragement and inspiration for the journey. But brothers and sisters, uh, uh, the, the, one way to stay consecrated uh, in the midst of chaos, first of all, you've got to have loyal people around. Surround yourself with loyal people. But before we move on past this particular point, there's one thing that I want to share with you that I also see in the text. Before we press further, one, uh, one thing that I want to share, one thing that the word is trying to warn us of is that also bad characters love good company. Pleasant parishioners and partners of PG, be careful because bad company loves, bad characters love good company. They love good people. The text says, if you walk with me in the text, the text says that the king called for the children with no blemish, no physical defect, those who were handsome, those uh, who were the smartest, those who were clever. In other words, the king, the unrighteous king, wanted the cream of the crop. He wanted the best of the best. This man wanted the creme de la creme. Brothers and sisters, and isn't that how it is in life? Brothers and sisters, those who uh, are unbelievers, those who, brothers and sisters, are the enemy of Christ, love to get the best of God's children so that the enemy uh, can ruin them. The enemy has an eternal agenda when it comes to desiring the best of God's people. If you walk with me through the biblical text, you will even see it in the word of God. You all remember that account of Job, don't you? When God referred to Job as the perfect and upright man, uh, Satan told God, if you remove the hedge that protects him, I will make Job curse God and die. The enemy desires to have the best of us. You all remember Peter, don't you? Peter, Peter, yeah, Peter, the father of the Jewish church, the, the one who helped Jesus bear the cross. You all remember Peter, that Peter, the one who took care of the mother of Jesus, the, the one who by casting, the casting of his shadow, healed people uh, of all manners of sickness and diseases just by the casting 
of his shadow. You all know that same Peter, before he was strengthened and before he was able to become the person who he was, that same Peter, uh, uh, brothers and sisters, the Lord had a conversation with Peter in Luke 2 and 31 because Satan was desiring Peter. And he said, Behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as we. Brothers and sisters, Jesus warns us in Matthew 24 and 24. For there shall arise false Christs. There will be false prophets that will show great signs and wonders in so much that it were possible, if it were possible, it will deceive the very elect of you. Satan desires to deceive the very best of us. Satan desires uh, to confuse the body of Christ. Satan desire, he has an agenda and desires to kill, steal, and destroy. Verse 5 underscores for us another thrust within this text. Uh, the other thrust within this text is this. Here it is. Uh, bad characters often contaminate godly company. Bad characters often contaminate godly company. The text indicates that not only did the king attempt to feed them with an improper diet, the king also changed their names. And brothers and sisters, your name is representative of your identity. Your name is who you are. Don't ever allow anyone to change your name. Somebody say, may be saying, well, Reverend Letcher, what are you talking about? Uh, uh, well, what I'm talking about is when someone changes your name, it is the first step to stripping you of your identity. Brothers and sisters, if you've ever watched the movie Roots, you all remember when Kunta Kinte was being beaten by uh, the slave master and he beat him, he beat him. He says, what's your name? He says, Kunta. But he finally was beaten into submission and he said, Toby. Brothers and sisters, in other words, what I'm sharing with you, we are Christian. We are Christian. In other words, a Christian assumes the identity of Jesus Christ. We are Christians. In other words, we are reflections of Jesus Christ. And by being called that, by being called a Christian, it suggests that we are loyal disciples of Jesus Christ. Satan wants to strip you of your name, and strip you of your identity and brothers and sisters and feed you uh, with a diet that is contradictory to what Christ is. The old axiom says association brings assimilation. Granddaddy's theological perspective on this was that, that birds of a feather would flock together. Uh, Amos 3 and 3 confirms this old axiom by saying, can two walk together unless they agree? You can't hang with a person and not be affected by their character. Brothers and sisters, also next thing I'll share with you and I, as I uh, move uh, to a close, sincere consecration brings godly transformation. Sincere consecration brings godly transformation. Let's look at verse 15. Verse 15 says that at the end of the 10 days, they looked better. When they decided to set their lives aside for a period of time to give to God for, they, for the service of God, the Bible says they even looked better. They look better than all the others who had been eating from the royal men, uh, menu. And I want you to know that God has preservation power. God has power to preserve you even in the midst of chaos. God has keeping power. God can keep you even in the midst of opposition and antagonism. God can keep you even in the midst of angst and anxieties, in the midst of trouble, heartache, and heartbreak. God can keep you, brothers and sisters, if you keep focused and if you allow your life to be 
consecrated for God's use. God can keep you. Galatians 6 and 9 says, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we do not faint. And I want to suggest to you that when God is with you, uh, brothers and sisters, you can find yourself in all kinds of trouble, uh, all kinds uh, of uh, situations, but God is able to preserve you and keep you. Whatever you're going through, God can keep you. Brothers and sisters, also, as we look at the text, uh, we understand that the Lord is with the young men, and even, even though they are had been through a, a sweltering, uh, fiery furnace, God kept them. Uh, and it was because of God and because of the Lord's hand upon them, they were able to survive. And I want you to know that the same God who walked with them in the midst of a fiery furnace, the same God who kept Daniel in the lion's den is the same God that can keep you when you're on a job and it seems as though you're not being recognized for your hard work. It's the same God that can keep you when you feel like bills are overtaking you. It's the same God who can keep you uh, as a company keeper in a holiday season when you feel alone. It is the same God that can keep you through sickness and sickness seems to be overtaking you. The same God that be, did it back then is the same God who walks with us today. And I want you to understand that whatever uh, you, you did and, and, and whatever accomplishments you have ever made, if you look at the text, it was because of God's grace uh, that God allowed them uh, to be who they were. Verse 17 says, God gave knowledge and skill. God gave knowledge and skill. Daniel had insight on visions and dreams. He had a special capacity. He had a special gift, brothers and sisters. Uh, and the, the subsidiary issue here in the text uh, that the text urges us to understand is whatever ability Whatever capacity, whatever spiritual gift, whatever skill, whatever good gift that you have is a contribution from the hand of God. Don't ever forget that however how high you rise, no matter what you've done in life, no matter what achievements that you have conquered, brothers and sisters, it is all due to the contribution of the graceful hand of God. Whatever success, whatever accomplishment that you've achieved in life, it is all because God has granted it to you. The Apostle Paul reminds us in Ephesians 2 and 8, for by grace are you saved through faith. The Apostle Paul reminds us in Ephesians 2 and 8 uh, that we are saved by, uh, through, uh, by grace through faith. And that is not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, lest no man or woman should boast. That's why the psalmist so eloquently sings in Psalm 115, uh, not to us, but to your name, to God's name, give the glory. George of Mass Choir used to sing this. It says, how much do I owe? And I'm closing how much do I owe? Somebody tell me, how much do I owe? And they keep on singing that song, brothers and sisters, and it says, I owe him my life. I owe him my praise. I owe him my service for the rest of my days. I owe him all. I owe him all and all. We owe God for waking us up early this morning. I owe God, I owe God for letting me see a brand new dawning. I owe God for holding me in the heart of God's hand. I owe God and all to him I owe. Brothers and sisters, I urge you that you get close to God by 
allowing yourself to have a season of fasting. I know that we are in this holiday season and I pray that your turkey uh, was juicy and delicious. But brothers and sisters, there are times in our lives as believers in which we should consecrate ourselves, set ourselves apart for the service of God. And God will preserve you, God will protect you, and God will give you what you need uh, in service to the Lord. Uh, brothers and sisters, the virtual door of God's house is open. The virtual door of God's house is open. We appreciate you for tuning in today. Uh, if you would like to be a part of Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, uh, you can do uh, it in one of uh, you can do it one of two ways. Uh, at this point, you, you can uh, call the church office at 314-535-7548, and you can leave a message uh, on voicemail. And also, brothers and sisters, you can do so. Uh, by sending an email at ghpruitt uh, at gmail.com. And if you leave a voicemail or an email, we will return, uh, we will respond to you uh, as soon as possible. Thank you. Uh, if there are any guests uh, watching today, thank you for joining us. You could have um, visited any worship service in the world, but we are thankful uh, that you have decided to worship with us uh, this morning. Brothers and sisters, we are striving to uh, return to in-person worship. We will keep you updated on our progress. We're thankful for you for staying committed uh, to the body of Christ in the ministry of Pleasant Green while we are uh, virtual. For that, we're thankful. Also, brothers and sisters, we want to mention uh, the generosity. Thank you for your continued generosity. Thank you uh, for how you have been faithful to God as good stewards over your financial resources and being generous to the ministry of Pleasant Green. The Bible says in Proverbs 3 and 9, honor God with your wealth. And brothers and sisters, we're thankful for you doing that. Also, for those of you who, would, uh, who perhaps don't know how to uh, share and in your generosity to the church. There are a couple of ways you can do that. You can send a check or a money order to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, our church campus at 1220 REV GH Pruitt Place, St. Louis, Missouri 63113. Send a check or a money order again to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church at 1220 uh, REV G.H. Pruitt Place, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. Or, brothers and sisters, you can give online on our website at www.pgmbcstl.org. Uh, and you can click on our giving and there you can give electronically. Again, we are thankful for your continued generosity. Brothers and sisters, I pray that you have gotten something out of this uh, virtual worship service. I pray that something has been said that inspired you. I pray that something has been said uh, that encouraged you. And most of all, brothers and sisters, I pray that something has been said uh, that would evoke you to living a life that is pleasing before the sight of God. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. And now just a word of benediction. God, we thank you for our virtual listeners. God, we thank you for our virtual audience. God, we ask that you have mercy on uh, Pleasant Green, the Pleasant parishioners and partners of PG. God, we ask that you keep them in perfect peace as they consecrate themselves and as their mind is stayed on you. God, we ask now that uh, those who uh, perhaps uh, a need companionship during the holidays. It can be lonely. God, we ask that you send them what they need. Be a company keeper. God, we ask that you have mercy upon those who are having health issues. God, we ask that you strengthen their body and give them a speedy recovery. God, we ask that you have mercy upon those who, uh, uh, those who uh, are grieving loss at the time. God, we ask that you uh, give them hope 
uh, in the moments of despair. God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of God's glory with exceedingly joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. And we all say amen, amen, amen. Also, brothers and sisters, we celebrate. I know that there are some birthdays. We celebrate uh, the November birthdays. We celebrate you. <clears throat> and we also celebrate the November anniversaries. Uh, one in particular that I got wind of. Thank you, Judy, for sharing with me uh, that Reverend Armstrong and Miss Carrie Armstrong uh, just celebrated 64 years of marriage. And we celebrate them. Praise God for their union. Whatever God has joined together, let no man put asunder. God bless you, pleasant parishioners. Until next time.